ZBrush has always been a unique 3D software, simply because it cannot be replaced. It is essential for sculpting, especially on big and very complicated projects. And for years, people stuck with it because, despite its quirks, it did things no other software could do, at least not at the same level. And since Maxon took over, there has been a lot of debate about whether ZBrush is actually improving or things are slowly falling apart. Some hope that with Maxon's resources, ZBrush would finally get the long-awaited updates, including better performance, improved UI, and features that users have been asking for forever. On the other hand, others feared the opposite – higher costs, restrictive licensing, and unresolved problems. And now, since some time has passed, the direction ZBrush is taking is kind of becoming clear. And to be honest, the future doesn't seem promising, or does it? But before we continue, I want to let you guys know that the Blender market is going over a huge winter sale right now, with 25% off thousands of products from add-ons, modifier setups, courses, and more. And by the way, if you don't know where to start, I have in the description of this video a list of some of the best Blender add-ons out there. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Before Maxon, ZBrush had one of the most user-friendly licensing models in the industry. You paid for it once, and that's it. No forced subscriptions, and no upgrade fees. Pixelogic has been offering free updates for over 20 years, which was unheard of. So if you bought ZBrush in 2010, you still got access to all the latest updates and features in 2021, without paying another dime. And someone summed it up really well. For ZBrush, it used to be one of the few programs that didn't work that way. Back in the days, when all my peers were pirating Adobe and Autodesk software, many of them would actually buy ZBrush because they knew they would continue to get updates for years, rather than being locked into a specific release. Then Maxon stepped in, and that changed. The perpetual license that made ZBrush so appealing is now gone, although a more expensive perpetual license is still available. Now, if you want to use ZBrush, you have to subscribe, and if you stop paying, you lose access, no matter how much you've already paid and invested already. For many, this didn't just feel like a price increase, it felt like they were being forced into a system they didn't want to be part of. The frustration wasn't just about pricing. The transition to Maxon's licensing system made things unnecessarily complicated. Before, you could install ZBrush on multiple devices and switch between them really easily. And now, you have to go through extra steps, log into a web portal, and sometimes deal with licensing errors that block you from opening the software. So not only is ZBrush now locked behind the subscription, but using it has become more frustrated and more complicated. If the updates were significant enough to justify this change, maybe people wouldn't be that upset. But there is another issue. Are the updates even worth it? You see, if ZBrush had seen major improvements under Maxon, maybe the price changes wouldn't be such a deal breaker. But so far, the updates haven't been all that impressive. Since Maxon's acquisition of ZBrush, the software has introduced features like Proxy Pose Tool and enhancements to the 2.5D workflows. The proxy pose feature allows for quick modifications of model topology, providing a dynamic method for posing characters. And the Drop 3D function combines Sculptor's 3D's technology with ZBrush's 2.5D canvas, enabling increased mesh density around brush strokes for enhanced detailing. And while these additions are useful, they don't address the bigger issues that users have been asking for for years. The interface, for example, has always been a common complaint. It is functional once you get the hang of it, but the learning curve is really steep. Me personally, I haven't seen something complicated like it before, and the design feels outdated compared to other modern 3D software. Many users were hoping for a proper UI overhaul that would make things more intuitive without sacrificing ZBrush's core functionality. Instead, it remains largely the same, which makes it difficult for new users to get comfortable with the software. And I get it. 
veteran users might want it to stay the same because probably they don't want to deal with the hassle of these changes. On the other hand, Polypaint is decent, but it could use some improvements. The same goes for Zmodeler, which is not the most intuitive to use, and maybe also a better UV unwrapping algorithm rather than relying on UV Master. Performance is also a major issue that has yet to be fully addressed. ZBrush is known for handling millions and millions of polygons better than most programs, but it still struggles in certain situations. Also, undoing actions can reach certain limits or get deleted in some cases, and viewport lag is still a problem when working with some tools. So instead of focusing on improving stability and responsiveness, Maxon's updates have felt more like minor additions rather than fixing the core experience. You see, the lack of significant updates is raising the question, why hasn't Maxon addressed these long-standing issues? One possible reason is that they are focused on integrating ZBrush into their existing ecosystem, like Cinema 4D and Redshift. Another possibility is that they don't see a business incentive in making massive overhauls when you continue to release smaller and incremental updates that justify the subscription models. And for many, it seems like Maxon has prioritized adding small features while leaving ZBrush's biggest issues largely untouched. The subscription model would be easier to accept if the software was seeing meaningful improvements, but when updates feel minimal, it is hard to justify the higher cost. For a long time, ZBrush didn't really have any competition. If you needed high detail sculpting, ZBrush was the only real choice out there, even though there were other competitors like Mudbox and 3D Code. But the surprising thing is that Blender has been improving its sculpting tools every year. And while it is not quite there compared to ZBrush, it is getting close enough because more and more artists are considering switching to using Blender, at least for those who don't work on big and huge projects. And someone pointed out that the alternative to dealing with Maxon's changes is to stop using ZBrush altogether and switch to Blender. Personally, I don't see that happening anytime soon. First of all, ZBrush has a core audience. And another thing, lots of artists work in companies and studios that offer ZBrush licenses, so they have to use it. And this part is important. So if you work in a studio, you will probably use whatever tools the company provides, which usually includes ZBrush. But if you are a freelancer, a hobbyist, or just a student, paying for a subscription when Blender is completely free and improving every single year is a harder choice to justify. Blender sculpting tools still have some catching up to do, but they are improving fast. Features like dynamic topology, voxel remeshing, and multi-resolution sculpting have made Blender a much more capable sculpting tool. I mean, compared to what it used to be. So if Blender continues to develop in the same current pace, Maxon might find that its biggest competitor isn't another paid software, because it is free to use by everyone, even for commercial use. So is ZBrush getting better or worse? This actually depends on what you were expecting. For artists who were hoping for major improvements, the last few years have been disappointing. The updates have been minor, and the licensing system is more frustrating, and the cost has gone up actually. And ZBrush is still one of the best sculpting tools out there, but for freelancers and smaller studios, the subscription model makes it harder to justify. Maxon could still turn things around, if they focus on fixing long-standing issues and improving performance and making ZBrush feel worth the subscription cost. And people might be less frustrated with the changes, but right now, it feels like Maxon is changing more while delivering less. So if they don't step up, more artists are gonna start looking for other alternatives. And with Blender improving every year and other options such as 3D code, the question of whether ZBrush is still essential is going to get more complicated over the years. And there you have it guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.